evening everyone i am miss lavnia all the way from malaysia and as you know i'm the founder and the person who is behind this crazy geek youtube channel crazy geek youtube channel was actually formed uh, because there was a huge gap between what the students study at the uh, at their at their college or the school and when they come to workplace or the work reality there's a huge gap so that's why uh, this crazy geek youtube channel was actually formed in the first place so uh, to date we have uh, speakers all around the world from pakistan india uh, malaysia uk and many more other countries they are wonderful people who are sharing their wisdom to the other audiences so today we have another exciting speaker and we are going to welcome mr tanu for our today's session a little bit about yourself sir before we start our session yep my name is tanner i am located near chicago in the united states I am a CPA. I'm currently a assurance manager at a big four accounting firm. Um and I grad I got a BBA and a master's in accountancy from the University of Wisconsin Madison. So that's a very nice introduction about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you can also share something that you do apart from just being an assurance manager. You're doing a lot of fun stuff. So you want to share yep. about that? Mm. Yep, so for me I'm primarily looking at mostly public companies but also private companies are in their financial statements so looking at their going through the walk through their processes, testing their accounts, testing their controls. That's kind of basically the core of that as well. I know there's also some companies that will deal with specialized transactions, ones going through an IPO, some going through a SPAC. So those mm-hmm. are the ones that are usually more interesting as well going through that. Okay, thank you so much. So how about your YouTube channel that you're also doing? Yeah, I want to share yep. a little bit about that. Yep. So I started a YouTube channel about a year ago. Uh it's mostly around trying to have a healthy active lifestyle while working in public accounting. I know we can be very busy working in public accounting especially during busy season. So I do a lot of trying to help promote a healthy, balanced work lifestyle and trying to live healthy and try to create efficiencies in your own life so that you can make time to take time for work but as well as to make efficiencies in your own life to make time to actually live a healthy lifestyle of eating healthy and making time to work out. Really really a huge shout out to you sir because not many people actually in our field uh, does that because we are always busy with our work and things like that and many times we neglect the health goals. Yep, uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I think I will actually put the link to my YouTube uh, video itself to your YouTube channel later. then so that they can check it out and it's trust me guys it's super cool i was really having fun seeing all the videos there okay let's go to today's session so so my very first question is is there a gap uh, between what you have studied when you were in your college um, i think i will say in your cpa exams and when you come to your working life in your audit firms and things like that yeah so There probably was a bit of a gap. So I know I graduated from college about 6 years ago. Seems like didn't seem like it was that long ago, but yeah, 6 years ago. And I guess from when I went from college into basically starting for my CPA exams, I felt like for the most part for some of the parts of the CPA exams that was helpful. I mean, I did leverage a lot of what I learned. I know in the financial reporting that I had a very strong background just based off what I learned in college. I know even looking at the BC exam that was also very helpful just the overall business environment ones where it was a little harder maybe because there's just not a lot of courses taught in it is like for me I went to the audit profession and I maybe only took uh two audit courses so there wasn't a lot of that type of experience it's more you kind of learn about how to audit but you really don't learn much about audit until you actually physically do it yourself so there is that kind of a gap there I know going from school as well and uh, the audit CPA exam I failed the first time and then I went was working full time as an audit uh, as an auditor for probably about 6 months and once I was actually in the audit field I then took the CPA exam again passed it easily so I feel like being in the field actually made a big difference of actually being able to be successful in that CPA exam but I know seeing new students that are coming in now I feel like they for the most part they come in with a strong kind of accounting background they know what accounting is basics of financial reporting mm-hmm. but i think the thing that is probably least i know there is kind of a 
I know a big thing that I work with is like there's a, basically a transformation in the kind of audit process or the audit field going more into like a data analytics type of mm-hmm. driven testing. So I know I see schools that are kind of driving more, they're offering more analytics courses, dealing with business analytics, big data, which is good to have that kind of mindset, knowing how to read big data sets. I know for me personally, I've actually also taught lectures at universities around big data and how big data and data analytics is transforming the art profession. Okay, thank you, sir. I think yeah. you, I've already answered my second question also, <laughs> the first question itself. Actually, what would be your advice to bridge the gap for the students or the fresh graduates who actually just come out of the university? Uh, yep. Maybe pick up one uh, advice that you want to share with them. Yeah, so one thing that I would definitely advise, I know when I talk to students that are still in college, is if there's the opportunity to take courses in data analytics, big data, or anything with just business analytics in general, I highly recommend it. Getting that skill is to be able to transform data, know how to visualize data, as well as even if you have the opportunity to use some of those tools like Altrix for transformation of data, or Power BI, or uh, Tableau to kind of with the visualization, getting experience of that and be able to read data, be able to identify trends and stuff like that would be very helpful when entering an audit profession. Okay, thank you so much, sir. My third question would be, if you had a chance to go back to your school or your university, which would be that one subject that you want to learn full-heartedly beyond the books? Ooh, so for this, I feel like I might have two answers to this one. More okay. is kind of along the business field. So it's still along with the whole data analytics I was kind of talking about before. I know for myself, I do a lot of coaching over data analytics stuff like that. But for myself, I feel like there's still more I can learn. So I have the opportunity to go back and learn more about the IT systems that I could use to help with the data transformation and data visualization process. For me, I would just like to continue expanding my knowledge of that, get more efficient in it. Another one for me as well is kind of outside of the business field is kind of somewhat of what my YouTube channel is kind of about as well, is kind of the whole wellness, like your fitness, nutrition, stuff like that. So even going back and looking at the kind of the science of that, so it's kind of unrelated to the business field. It's more of just my own personal interest of maybe learning more about nutrition and stuff like that of what I could be doing to kind of help myself live that more happier, more balanced life. Yeah, that's interesting, sir. Okay, my next question would be, as you know, the field that we are in, audit, accounts and taxation, how do you be creative at your work when it comes to like a monotonous work or sometimes it becomes a routine work? How do you handle that? Yeah, so I feel like a lot of this Kind of, so if you have people, I know a lot of us kind of work maybe in a team setting potentially. So I know the work might not, might always be the most exciting. I feel like it's definitely gotten more exciting as I've gone through my career. Cause I know when I first started in the audit profession, the way a lot of the audit procedures were done was through what was kind of through substantive testing was through like detail testing. So if you're looking at like revenue, for example, in order to test revenue, you're going to test, I don't know, a hundred revenue transactions. That in itself is pretty mind numbing. To be honest, you're just kind of testing one individual revenue transaction over and over and over again. However, kind of the way that audit profession is kind of changing is more looking at analytically. So as opposed to say if you're kind of looking at like if you have a book, for example, a 300 page book, the prior way of testing just 100 transactions is maybe just looking at, I don't know, 100 paragraphs from that book. However, when you're using data analytics, you're basically looking at the you're basically looking at the entire book. So you're mm-hmm. looking at the entire population of revenue. And it's kind of, I don't know, I find it maybe it's just the nerd to me that kind of looks at the likes looking at the data and stuff like that. But the data itself kind of tells a story. So I enjoy kind of looking at the data, visualizing it, kind of disaggregate into separate parts and way to, to test it, look for outliers, look for trends, things that are unusual. And the base of the data itself kind of tells a story of how the company mm-hmm. operated through the whole year. So for me, that I kind of find that exciting as well. But I know a lot of things that helps make the job more exciting is kind of the people you work with. So I know that's one thing that drove me into public accounting was having the opportunity to work with people that are my same age, same mindset, same type of background. So being able to work with those type of people, honestly, is kind of what keeps me in public accounting for this long that I've been here for about six years now. So the people you work with do make do play a big part in making a more kind of fun work environment 
and making the work more enjoyable. I totally agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not many people actually are very passionate uh, about this field itself, but I'm a kind of person who is actually passionate about this field and came into this field, but not many of them like that like my colleagues and things like that. But then I think the leader who is actually guiding the entire team uh, is very very important because he I- He is very passionate. Uh, then he shows the love towards this uh, subject matter, and I think that's how I learned and started loving this more than ever. <laughs> Completely agree. Yeah, the tone at the top of your team is definitely very important. So if you have a person that's above you that really enjoys the line of work and shows an interest, and kind of just kind of sprinkles down to the people below you as well, because they kind of get more intrigued and they kind of learn. They kind of see it through the same scope. They're looking at it, and it kind of works best for everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Yep. Yeah, my next question would be uh what are your current views for our education system? It can be from your country or as a general one and what are your few measures you are taking for the betterment of the education itself? Yeah, so looking at the educational system, I feel like it does a very good I guess it's kind of more from my experience in the US. I feel like thinking about myself my education kind of set me up very well in terms of giving a strong financial reporting background, strong accounting background. I know what might be help help him kind of improve a little bit is kind of get that experience or so I know offering like internships as well. So you're basically learning it take a summer or a semester, have an internship and be able to take what you learn to apply it and then going back to school to kind of continue learning and know All right, I got experience. What's something I can continue learning in order to get better at that job? So I know that was a big thing for when I was in school. I was in a accounting master's program. I learned accounting for about 3 years, took a in a semester off for an internship in public accounting. So I got a chance to apply some, reflect on all right, got through the internship, what was something I need to learn? Or something I need to learn more that I went back to school for half a semester. then went back for another year for my masters and I was able to choose courses I wanted that I knew that would benefit me more and when I have to go back and work full time in public accounting so I feel like that helped very well if you're able to get an internship one or two during your schooling to get that in job experience to you know you kind of start applying what you've learned but then you get through this you get through your internship and you realize all right what's something still I need to learn to go back to school and get get more of the education in that particular area I know for me personally I have like I was saying kind of saying before I've gone back I've gone to the universities I've kind of taught how taught about big data to accounting graduate students and how it's kind of transformed the audit process we've also done like case studies as well of where I give them a scenario they work through it they're also able to use some similar kind of IT applications that you would see in the actual audit profession so they're actually within a 3 hour lecture but they're having the opportunity to try and apply what they can expect to learn in the actual audit profession. That's really really nice. So I just want to ask a question if we are from Malaysia or any yeah. other countries if they if they want to engage with you with regards of data analytic courses and things like that how do they approach? Yeah, so if you want to learn more about it, I guess There's also opportunities. I know there's some free opportunities if you learn more about data analytics in terms of the data transformation process. So I know one system that I use frequently is called Altrix. There is the opportunity to get certifications in using Altrix to design workflows and like that. They're for, for the free online. These look great on a resume. I personally have my own resume. I've got the certification. You can go online. It's like a 2-hour exam. You can go on their Altrix website. They have some materials you can learn, some mm-hmm. kind of community blogs as well you can also learn about it as well as you you can reach out to me anytime you can find me on like LinkedIn direct message me on uh Instagram as well I'm I can be found as account fitness reach out to me I'm happy to share more insights as well about more resources I can offer share insights and things like that Thank you so much. Sir. I have my very last question yeah. for this session. Uh this is going to be a very interesting question. Share with us your one mistake that you had made when you were a university student or when you were a school at school but now the adult you would want to change that mistake. Oh, it's a good question. So I feel like any I feel like I haven't made one major mistake that I've looked back and it's kind of severely impact my 
learning journey or career path. I don't know, I feel, I, the way I kind of look at it is like every mistake I've made, I've taken as a learning opportunity. So for myself, if I make a mistake, I feel like I learned the most from those mistakes to continue going forward in the right fashion. So I don't, wouldn't say I've made any mistakes that have been, that have severely altered my career at all. I know I, anything, anytime I mess up, I always kind of take it as an actual learning opportunity, learn from it, and actually, I honestly probably grow more from the mistakes that I made. But in terms of one that I would go back, I wouldn't actually go back and probably change any mistakes I've actually made through okay. college or my career so far. Yeah, that's really, really nice. So thank you so much for all the answers that you have given so far. Is there any final words you want to share with our audience today, sir? Yeah, so one last thing is I know if you're working in the odd profession right now, I know a lot of us probably are working a lot of hours. One thing that I always stress, the people I work with, things I stress on my YouTube channel and social media is to always take care of yourself first. So make sure you're always taking time for yourself get some movement in your day as because I know a lot of accounts are probably sent down for most of the day. If you have the opportunity to stand up while you're working, stand up and try to move as much as you can through your day. Take time for yourself, work out, eat right. Because honestly, what matters most is taking care of us. So that's probably the biggest thing I'd like to stress everybody out there. Thank you so much, sir. I had a really, yeah. really fun session with you. Uh, that's all for today's session. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. Take care, bye. Yep. Thank you for having me.